Hello students, this is Nathan Bryan from the Digital Monkey School and this is lecture number seven of the beginners class to Maya animation. Today we are going to discuss the basic ball bounce. Uh, the ball bounce is something every animator learns to understand weight and timing. Uh, right now I have got to get the timeline to be the right number of seconds. You can either use a stopwatch and imagine a ball bouncing or bounce a ball or bounce your hand on the table or you know whatever you want just as long as you get the timing. Uh, I pulled 120 frames out to make a basic basketball like ball something with air in it, something that has bounce to it. Um, you can make it any kind of ball from a bowling ball to a tennis ball. So I have 120 seconds here and I did that by changing the end numbers. There are two of them. The first one is the numbers of the frames that you currently view. If I were to change what I'm viewing in the timeline, that number changes. The end number is how many frames you have for your timeline. So to make a ball bounce, we're going to use the uh, grid to be our ground and we're going to drag the ball up so we give it room to bounce. We're going to animate from the side view side spacebar to enter it. We're going to hit S to key the first frame. We're going to go now maybe 15 frames into it and bring it down till it's touching the ground. hit S, so we have two keys. And then we're going to bring it up to about halfway for the next frame. So we're going to figure out the next frame is about here. I'm going to put my finger on the screen around there and move the ball up to that location. So now we have a bounce and it goes about halfway. Now depending on the weight of the ball, you're going to have it bounce up higher or lower. For a bowling ball, for example, on its second bounce would only be about here. Because it's heavy, it's not going to bounce that much. But since we're doing a basketball, we're going to leave it up there. The next one's going to be on the ground again. We could either come in here and like bring it down to the ground, which is hard to get it exact to your other frame that's on the ground. So instead we're going to middle mouse drag that key over to where our next frame is going to go. Hit S. Now what the middle mouse drag does, it allows us to take a point in the timeline and drag it to another place and key things from that pose. So now we have it bouncing two bounces. The next one's going to be half the height of the one before it. So I'm going to find where it needs to go. It'll put my finger on it. And then on the next keyframe, I'm going to drag it up to that location. Next one comes on the ground, so I'm on a middle mouse just like I did before. And next key is half of that. You can already see the bounce sort of working out for you. Bring it back to the ground for the next frame. See if we can get another bounce in there, so it's going to be even uh, half of that. And then on the ground for the final rests. Okay, hit play to try it out. Alright, looks pretty good. Uh, still a little floaty, so we're going to go into the graph editor to edit that. When we first open the graph editor, we have a bunch of curvy lines. 
since we've only moved it in one direction, only one of them is going to be active, and you can sort of see it moving and undulating just like our bounce. This is going to be the translate y, as translate y is up and down. We can see our curve here. To center it in our screen, we put our mouse over that screen and hit F. You can see that it translates the curve to fit this whole screen. Now we can move it around, we can scale just like the perspective view. Middle mouse and then the right mouse button. To move things in this graph editor, we're, we're going to use either the move tool or the scale tool. W and R if anyone has forgotten. To start we're going to use just the move tool to make sure that you know our keys are in the right place. You know if the first few frames are too far apart we can drag them in. We can select multiple of them, drag those in. Remember to test play it each time. Now one thing that we'll notice is like especially in the very beginning if we come up here and go through the bounce, you see that it actually goes through the ground. If we select this, we can move it around and it rotates it to, uh, rotates the pose so that it doesn't go through the ground anymore. But we want a little bit more than that. Uh, since we scaled the uh, scaled and moved all of these points, for this one curve, it's offset from the other curves, so we need to come in here and make sure the other curves are on the same frames. You can either move them around like this, or since we haven't actually animated them yet, you could simply delete all of the extras. So you can see that these two are not even, we can just hit delete on that, and then key it where the curve meet, reaches its point. So to make a realistic bounce, we don't just want to rotate it because that'll have it slowing down before it touches the ground. And anyone who's ever dropped anything knows that when you drop it, it doesn't slow down right before it hits the ground. It actually speeds up. And then you know, as it's bouncing, it moves fast and then slow in its height and then comes back down again. So what we're going to do is we're going to break the tangents so that these two can move separately. Breaking tangents is right here. You can see it changes the color of the two arms and now they can both be moved separately. Break tangents. Remember, if you accidentally move something you don't want to do, Control Z undoes it. Now, these last couple of bounces are so close, it's like hard to see the actual curve. I'm going to highlight them and hit F. That's going to center that area so we can see it a bit better. Break tangents. And this last one, since we're going to have it come to a stop, we're just going to rotate it so that it has a realistic movement. Now if we hit play, you're going to see that the bounce is a little bit more like a bounce. Still a little unusual as to like the top of that bounce. We can either edit the amount of break in the tangents, Or we can add some extra keys to make sure that the top of the curve has a bit of a hang time. But to do that, I can come in here somewhere along the curve and middle mouse a couple of frames and hit S. You can see that it adjusts the curve a little bit, gives you an extra point to work with.
if you need to move a specific point, a move tool, and you can middle mouse in like one direction by holding down the shift key and middle mouse dragging. Or you can just drag it freely. You'll see that it's it pops to the individual frames and it just moves smoothly up and down as to the different amounts of translate Y. Just trying to get something that looks a little bit more like a bell shape instead of a basic dome. Hit F to center a specific point. Allows us to get a little bit closer and see those curves. Don't be afraid to move something around if it doesn't quite look right. You can always change it after you've tested it. So if you like the look of the curve, it's beginning to look about right. Uh, this will often come with you know experience and trying it out. And making mistakes, making mistakes is a huge part of it. You can see that the ball is beginning to bounce a little bit more like a ball with air. It's got a bit of hang time. It's got a bounce to it when it hits the ground. So this is the end of this stage. Um, on our next video, we're going to make the ball move in a direction and you know, have it not just be up and down, but having it bounce realistically. Have a great afternoon, and I'll see you later.